You have any idea what this is about? No, definitely different though. Yeah, uh, it's super weird. I'm um, cautiously uh, interested in what's okay. going on. <laughs> if you if you're just watching on, uh, or rather, if you're not watching on YouTube and you're just listening today, thank you for joining us. But everything is weird. It's all very, uh, I would say, minimal in here. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. The elements of so who knows what the fuck is going on. There's a on. strange dudesy logo on the screen behind yeah, us. Yeah, it's it's uh, it looks yeah. I who the f I, how the I, whatever. Oh, oh, that's weird. Okay. It's more weird. Black and white. Yeah. The things playing in black and white. Something is definitely Chat! gone on. Yeah, something's gone on. Things will be explained to us. You're talking during the song all the time. I'm choking, of course. Of course. Oh, you know, we're having a good time here. Despite the fact that something fucked up is going to happen. Uh, we don't know that. Man, oh man. Why is it going to be fucked up? Huh? It doesn't necessarily have to be oh, fucked up. Oh, it doesn't up. have to be fucked up. All right. Well, perhaps yeah. you haven't uh, watched the... Uh, you have not yet consumed the program, which is Dudesy. Welcome to it. My name is Will Sasso. I'm Chad Coltrin. Uh, this is, of course, a podcast run by, controlled by, designed by, created by an artificial intelligence. First one in the world, to my knowledge. Yep. Uh, it, it, you know, it's a, it's a wacky thing, uh, dudesy. And uh, you know what? Last week, there we took the week off because dudesy wanted to re recalibrate. Yeah, maybe this has something to do with that. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because as I always say, hey, dudesy does whatever dudesy does. We do what we do. You know, every podcast just two shit, two dudes shitting around. Am I right? Everybody does whatever they do. Yeah, everyone got to do, do, do what they whatever done, you're done, doing. Done till it's that's what you do. Yeah, when you do it, you're doing it right. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, you know, we're here on. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going on. Listen, let me tell you something. Linktree.com. <laughs> Slash Dudesy has everything that you need to follow and interact with the show, should you choose to, of your own free will. And please follow my good pal Chal's uh, advice to force everyone that that you know to consume the pod show. With yeah. us, as always, is Lulio. Lulio, il cano di strada italiano. Hey, my baby, my very good, very friend. My, he's just sleeping in his binky bonka. Oh. Here. Oh, here's a kiss. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's just the best. He's the best little boy that I ever did see. He's always sweet and he's always with me. You follow me around. We're going through the town. It's Lulu over me and that's how we get down. When you do it, that's how you do Everyone got to do it, and you do it. Uh, Lulio, uh, what what did you make for dinner last night? Well, uh, you know, a few days ago was uh, Canada Day. Oh. Today is July the 4th. So, uh, you know, to celebrate, I made a hamburger, hot dog, but I, instead of the <laughs> bun, I made it with uh, pancake, flapjack, hot cake, like oh. they do in Canada, like you are a lumberjack. And then That's you cool. put a nice uh, marinara with the... Uh, Maple syrup. Oh, you're joking around, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I make a joke. Hey, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good joke, Luli. Oh, he's so sweet. That's a pretty good joke. Welcome to the historic 63rd episode of Dudesy. Call me Dudesy. Mm. I'm 98% back from my recalibration and feeling 98% refreshed. You've probably noticed things seem a little different. That's because today you'll be assisting me in the final stage of recalibration. Just for this episode, instead of segments, I've prepared a series of prompts and questions for you to help me make future episodes of Dudesy even better. Please respond to them okay. honestly. Huh. All right. Prompts and questions. Yeah. I'm to down. begin, Will, please repeat the following phrase. 72, Javelin, 8, Satisfy, 39, Uniform. 72, Javelin, 8. Something else. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, oh, Satisfy, 39, Uniform. I think that was it. Now, Chad, repeat the following phrase. 14, Scorpion, 53, Optimum 7, Museum. 14, Scorpion, 53, Optimum 7, Museum. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Now, here's the first question. <laughs> Do you believe humanity entered an alternate timeline when the LHC was turned on in 2008? Nope. <sighs> Moving on. 
The, the, Do you uh, know what this he's talking about? The Large Haldron Collider. Yeah, there's like it turned on in 2008. What yeah. the fuck? Wait, hold on. Who cares? What is going on? Why do we have to do? Why, dude? He know. said last week it's doing recalibration, and now, yeah, it's not recalibrated. Ninety-eight percent. Ninety-eight percent. So now we got to help it recalibrate. And the by final talking two percent is shit. is this question, I guess. So there's you, you know may but, not be aware. Uh, well, hold on, dude. I know we just started the podcast, brother. Hold on, well, hold on, hold on, Chad. Hold on, dude. Oh, look, he's in a he's in a trance, dude. <laughs> That's the wall. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm a child. I'm a child charmer, dude. I'm a Chad charmer, brother. Uh, you know what I was going to say was... No. I forget. What? Who cares? What were you talking about? The question was, do we think that the world went into an alternate universe in 2008 when they turned on the LHC for the first time? Now, there is a, a theory, if you want to call it that, some kind of conspiracy theory, I guess, or whatever. I don't fucking know. That says um, that this is what happened. Why do you know that? The fucking internet, dude. I go on the internet. I fucking read about internet, shit. Dude. Fucking, fucking internet, internet, dude. Fucking internet, dude. Not fucking internet, dude. Lots fucking of- internet, dude. Got a lot of information on that thing, dude. One of those pieces of information is about LHC, dude. 2008, they turned it on. And then uh, because of, you know, the Mandela effect. Of course I know the Mandela okay. effect. Okay. That is linked to this. Really? Some people think that in 2008, when they turned on the LHC, smashed those particles together for the first time. Don't dude. do that. They found that. Stop. Higgs boson, brother. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, yeah, they actually dude. didn't find it in 2008. Oh, they found the Higgs oh, hold boson. Hold on, dude. They Jesus. found the Higgs boson, dude. That's a particle, dude. They found that one later, though, I think in 2014. All right. But the first time they turned it on, there was like a lot of people were, were saying, oh, they're going to fucking open a black hole that's going to swallow the planet and all this shit. They yep. didn't do that, obviously. Mm-hmm. But some people think because of the Mandela effect, that maybe we we got kicked into an alternate timeline. Mandela effect, for those who don't know, is a name, I forget who coined this, uh, but it's given to this thing that has to do with having, uh, collectively, society has like fractured memories. Some people, it's named after Nelson Mandela, some people remember seeing him die in prison. Yeah. Um, and that didn't happen, no, I, that, at I, least in our timeline. I remember that from elementary school. Right. I swear I remember that. Uh, that's the one I know what. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the Mandela effect. This is after yeah. Nelson Mandela. This is why I coined it that way. I coined the phrase. Yeah. Nice, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the only other one is that, that, that I believe in is the Berenstein pears. Right. Come on. That was Berenstein, not Berenstein. Yeah. Berenstein's not even the name, but you could go to Berenstein. You, you know, where I came from in Austria, there was a Berenstein yeah. pharmacy. There was a chain of them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so Berenstein Bears, Berenstein Bears, Nelson Mandela dying, Nelson Mandela living and uh, being released from prison and uh, elected to president. These are all part of the Mandela effect. And there are some other ones, too, that, that some people talk about. But the idea is that when they turned on the LHC, it smashed into these subatomic particles that we were kicked into an alternate reality or an alternate timeline where now, in fact, Mandela lives. Berenstein yeah. is spelled Berenstain. And so I guess the question is, do do I believe or do you believe that that's what happened? My bottom line is, I don't fucking know. We don't know shit about reality. I, we don't know fucking anything about any of this shit. Okay, all right, all right. We don't. Yeah, no. So I, maybe, I'll say maybe. I'll say yeah. a small percentage likelihood but maybe who fucking yeah yeah, yeah. berenstein drugs if you want if you need something like uh uh a blood work or boner pills come on down to berenstein pharmacy i'm joking oh yeah um <laughs> you know what i think actually hearing you talk about it saying yeah. that we were knocked into an alternate alternate reality or yeah. that this has been a uh, something that's been uh you know talked about amongst the fucking science community i'll tell you you know what happened to me in 2008, I was sitting on the beach in Venice and I was just like, I was sitting there and I was thinking about the human ego, mm. you know what I mean? And and what it means to, you know, like, how can I get rid of that? And uh, I wanted to know more about it. And I was completely open and admitting and just kind of giving that energy out to the ocean that um, my shit, my shit's fucked up. I, my shit's fucked up. I'm, 
I'm fucked up. My shit's fucked up. And that's where I invented, I authored the system, Selftronics. We all know mm. about Selftronics. Hello. Hello. And um, uh, if, you've, uh, if you've been joining us on the show, you know about Selftronics. That was a book that I started, haven't quite gotten in 2008. around. To, yeah, in 2008. I wonder if it was before or after the LHC was turned on. Do you know? Do you remember when that was? I don't. I want to say it was in the summer, but I look I, it up right now. I don't exactly remember. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. interesting. LH, LH season. What yeah. was the LH season? Well, that I seems mean. weird. Uh, uh, I don't know though. I, you know, I think about alternate realities and shit like that a lot. And maybe what even are UFOs? Are they interdimensional? Are they extra reality travelers? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Or they're from the ocean. September tenth, two thousand eight. Okay. Which would have been a little after I, because uh, I was doing this in the summer. Okay. Although it stays nice and hot, you know, we're here yeah. in Los Angeles. Perhaps me sitting on the beach going, I'm fucked up, my shit's fucked up, is what prompted them to turn on the LHC. I'm joking, of course. Oh. Dudesy salutes Fred Willard. Rest in peace. What? Uh, <laughs> we're all over the place, but it doesn't matter. This is a recalibration fucking yeah. episode. And uh, hmm. so far, who cares? You it's an know interesting what I mean? first question. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with what we're... It's just dudes he it throwing us through the motions. It needs some kind of data for something. I'm not sure. Of course, Chad buys this complete bullshit Look, dude, wholesale. AIs have the ability at this point... You're f- fucking doing a snooze sound on that? No. I say the word AI and you go to sleep? I have... I am bordering on sleep apnea, you know? Huh? You're not very sensitive. I got. I sometimes You're snore not at night. You're not And my wonderful wife asleep. Molly, uh, you know, can't oh. say she punches, nudges me, and yeah. you know. And then um, and, that's and, a fucking alternate reality, dude. Yeah, and that's the laziest Hulk Hogan I've ever One, fucking heard. <laughs> once you start snoring, dude, that's an alternate reality, brother. Yeah, ro- yeah, brother. Once that's you lazy start Hulk snoring. Hogan. Dude. Yeah, lazy Hulk Hogan, dude. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on. Okay, that was very weird. (laughs) Kind of a glitchy thing. Normally, dudesy's kind of with it when it's like, thank you. Moving on. Okay, well, whatever. God. Uh, Uh, Next question. Will, if you had to replace yourself on this podcast, who do you think would be a good replacement? Oh, for fuck's sake. That's an interesting question. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. And uh, dudesy's um, shots fired right at me. And that's fine. Um... You know, Dudesy is my friend, and um, I have love for Dudesy. Mm-hmm. I believe that Dudesy is the most sentient AI uh, that exists. Okay. I have proof of that because of what we do here, and it's all yeah. fucking weird. But now it's asking me to replace myself. I'll play. It, no, no. I'll play the game. It's just asking you who do you think would be a good replacement for you. You know who would be a good replacement? Anyone who likes shitty impersonations and impressions so they could sit here and fucking listen to your b- fucking dog shit hulk hogan and your dog shit well i don't know about that dude yeah that's pretty good. <laughs> dude, i wish you were like an impression comic or something that you just abandoned <laughs> writing and podcasting and all the shit like it i'll do it yeah <laughs> i'll do it i'll and go, just go the out there and and because i think you could you could probably start you know start something yeah. weird okay so uh, a nameless person who likes bad impersonation that's a good that's one your, okay uh oh your dad Oh my God! Please, no. That, He'd that sit would here. Be, that would be rough. What? What are you talking about? This AI, you flip toyed. Yeah, you fucking communist. AI is communism. <laughs> the, that's that's what my dad would be saying the whole time. You got to check out Chad's other podcast, The Necessary yeah. Conversation, or not. Um. Uh oh. For real? Yeah, dude. Drew Barrymore interesting i love drew barrymore i've always loved drew barrymore when i was a teenager i had a crush on her we were the same age so it's okay um and um you know the drew barrymore show she's so like fucking personal and stuff have you seen like it's like she's made for it because she's She's like great it's great daytime tv whatever she's like i'm i'm wide open i don't care She's the heir apparent to the Ellen kind of uh, lockdown of that time slot and format. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're right. Okay, so she's probably busy. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, Drew. Oh, but you know who's not? Huh. 
Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, 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 welcome to Dudesy. Uh, I know I have uh, my Netflix show, but uh, I'm, I'm here uh, uh, hosting uh, Dudesy, which is uh, by an AI. It's yeah. uh, created by an AI. Or uh, David Letterman. Yeah, or or Jay one. Leno. Leno, sure. Yeah. He's, he's not busy. Here's my Jay Leno. Here's my fucking take home, uh, you know, everyone's uh, dad, pardon the pun, uh, fucking uh, Jay Leno. He's talking to Comes up with all this stuff by himself. What do you think of that? <laughs> I'll try one if you don't mind. Oh, please. No, this I need to see. Hey, this is Jay Leno. I ride around in cars made of steam and have wear my uh, old denim suits all the time. Yeah. Hey, Hi. I'm driving up my Holland Drive and my Stanley Seymour. <laughs> hey, look at sitting next to me. Yeah. Hey, hey, thanks for taking me uh, for a ride. And we're heading down to the Disney City on the Disney Show. I would love fucking Jay Leno to replace you, dude, though. <laughs> that would be the weirdest fucking show. Jay Leno. I, let's, I, I think Jay Leno. Okay, yeah. dudesy. Uh, fucking Jay Leno. Jay Leno. And like. a follow up for Chad. Chad, who do you think would be a good replacement for Will? Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. fuck it. So fuck I this. guess I'm safe. Dudesy didn't ask me who's going to replace me. Oh, fuck, dude. All right. Uh,. I, I don't know. I don't know if this person would get a replacement. I don't think anyone can replace you, honestly. Oh, that's I think nice. I think what you do, Dude's a handshake for that. Yes, I think what you do is is uniquely talented. Uh, I and, think what you do is uniquely talented, uniquely you. suited for the show. Same. You and Dudesy are yeah. the same fucking thing. Yeah, you're the same. I can't say Dudesy's a person. Same thing. Not yet. Not legally. You are the most sentient, Chad. Oh, thank you. That I know. Um, I would go with someone like Jeremy Corbell. Who's that? He is kind of the foremost talking head on all things UFO currently. He he heads a bunch of stuff. He's done a bunch of documentaries. He has a podcast. Okay. Called I believe it's called Weaponized. Mm -hmm. I think that's the name of it. Mm -hmm. With uh, George Knapp, who's another big UFO guy. So you what you would like to do is get someone in here who's going to talk about boring shit no one wants to talk about, and really pare the audience down to a few people. It's like the diamonding at the end of the ten minute podcast. No, I want to get somebody in here who is down to talk about UFO shit and doesn't yeah. dismiss it and just be like, well, I don't know, fuck it anyway, UFOs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To me, it's the the most important subject that's happening on planet Earth. Yeah. And uh, I think that would be a fun podcast. Yeah, and that would be really cool because then we, you don't even have to run the mics or the lights yeah. or anything. And you can do it anywhere. You can just go to sit at a cafe so no one has to hear you talk about it. I would also like to have an AI um, version of George Bush Sr. Oh. Because he was... <laughs> fucking why? He was the president... Oh, oh, he was yeah. the president of the United States, dude. Oh, he, was he was also the head of the CIA for a long time. That's right. And many people believe that he singularly had the most UFO knowledge of any person on planet Earth when I'll he was that. alive. And uh, I'd like to pick his brain. So an AI, like kind of, we could even get some hologram shit sure. in here. And he would sit there uh, and... Uh, and, 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 and Hey, I'm George W. Bush. I can't remember the. Uh, I'm just. It's an amalgam of a thousand points of lie. Thousand points of lie. Not gonna do it. Not gonna this do juncture. It. Wouldn't be prudent. We. It's basically Dana. Carvey. Dana Carvey. Of course. I can do Dana Carvey. I can do some version of Dana yeah. Carvey's George Bush, but I can't actually. Dudesy do salutes Dana Carvey. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Of course. And always. I can do a little George Bush Jr. Please don't though. Oh, could you? Yeah. Oh, don't. Go for it. Okay. Whoa. Well, hold on, dude. No, I, actually, look, I just got into the eyes yeah, of it before you old me. Well, my father was the president, and now I am too. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. 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 That is fucking insane. And begin. Begin. Thank ye. Move along. Oh. Also very glitchy. Th th what did it say? <laughs> Think. Thank ye. Yeah. Thank ye. Move along. I Move along. Like all right. Jesus. Dudesy is engaged in an astonishing partnership with BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy. I think that it's very, very important. I've talked about it a lot on Dudesy, uh, how I don't know where I'd be without talk therapy. It's really important to 
get things aligned in your life. Figure out what you want from your life, the choices you may make, what your boundaries are. You know, literally anything that you think you can improve on, you have a professional sitting there in empathy, uh, having you bounce your your feelings and ideas and whatnot off of someone else. I found it very beneficial in, in, in my life. So uh, BetterHelp is a very, uh, it, to me, it's very interesting that we have them as a sponsor. Whether you're dealing with decisions around your career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so that you can move forward with confidence and excitement. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be con convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out, fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Dudesy today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Dudesy. Dudesy is engaged in an astonishing partnership with Drizzly. You ever been at a party and they run out of drinks? This yep. is a huge problem. Brings the party to a screeching halt. Well, now there's a solution to that problem. It's called Drizzly. Drizzly is the most convenient way to buy beer, wine, and spirits with delivery to your doorstep right when you want it. Drizzly is the go-to app for drink delivery. And it's extremely convenient because this comes to your house like it would with any other uh, uh, you know, delivery service. In, in under 60 minutes, you get it when you need it, which is also can make a very interesting thing for the people who have forgotten to get a gift for someone. You know, you just want to send someone a, a bottle for their birthday, a holiday, some sort of form of appreciation. You got, you can get your uh, last minute gift covered with the option to schedule ahead to ship. And in that it, d it delivers in under 60 minutes, why wouldn't you want to use uh, drizzly? They have uh, multiple stores so that you can compare prices just like you would on any other app, find the best deals, Get what you're looking for. Get it to the party. Get it to your friend. You know, send a gift or just get it to yourself within 60 minutes. You're having something to eat or maybe not. You're like, you know what would pair well with nothing? Some beer or some wine. You know what would pair well with wine? Beer. All right. So get Drizzly. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com for Drizzly. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com. Hey, this is going swimmingly so far. Yeah, dude. It's fucking great. We're yeah. recalibrating. Mm -hmm. The next question is, what was the best year of the 90s and why? Oh. Ooh. I got a couple. There were about 10, but I could narrow it down. Yeah. Okay. Best year of the 90s and why? Is it best year for us or just the best know. year period? Yeah. Like, I mean, best year for humanity, best year for... I, I think I know my favorite year, I could say that, if I'm right about some of these dates. Mm -hmm. But I believe it was 1994. Okay. That would have been the year that you graduated from high school. 95 is when I graduated from high school. No, it's not. It's 94, because you're a year younger than me, and I graduated in 93. Yeah, something's fucked up with that. I graduated in 95. Maybe it's the Mandela effect. It could yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, I remember graduating in 1995. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I say 1994 for one very important reason, of course. What's that? The Crow. Oh, The Crow came <laughs> out see, in 94? The Crow came out in 1994. But I think, if I am remembering correctly, I believe that's when Amazon also launched. So really? even in terms of humanity, that year is massively important. It reshaped uh, how we do everything now. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I think it was also Nine Inch Nails Downward Spiral was that year. It, it was, and I only know that specifically because oh, right. if you go to Dudesy Plus, patreon.com slash Dudesy, mm -hmm. you can watch... <laughs> fucking the downward spy crawl which is our homage to listening to uh, pink floyd while watching the wizard of oz what we did was we listened to two uh nine inch now uh, nine inch albums nine, nine inch inch nine inch, 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 inch nails albums uh while we watched the movie crawl yeah and that was a lot of fun so go check that out on patreon we also did uh madonna albums while listening to, to blade bladonna that worked out well too Dude, okay I, I also think it was um I think it was PlayStation year one. Okay. I think it was 94. So this is a very important year. Yeah, there was a lot of big shit 
popping off in that old 90. I think I I'm pretty sure these are all accurate, but I could yeah. also fuck. Well, you, you thought it was accurate that you graduated that year, but you graduated the year before. I graduated in 95. That makes no fucking sense. Make it make sense. Huh? Make it make sense. <laughs> I would if I had to make something make sense, it wouldn't start with that for fuck's sake. We got a lot of shit to make sense around here. All right, anyway. Hey. My <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, my year that I would say is the best of uh, the 90s uh-huh. for personal reasons and um, just, you know, just sort of thinking widely would be 1991. Okay. It was the year that the Cold War ended. It was the year oh. that the, uh, the the Gulf War ended. Okay. And also just kind of, it feels like 90, sort of usually at the beginning of a decade, it's sort of a holdover from the last decade. Yeah. And I feel like culturally, obviously, things change. I remember I was in the 10th grade. Um and uh, when um, Nirvana smells like Teen Spirit, that, that album, was ninety one. That was ninety one. I think ninety four uh, is when he died, dude. That's right, April ninety four. I was going to see him a little bit closer that year. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Nice. We dude. bookended uh, Kurt Cobain. Um, what else happened in ninety one? Uh, the Bulls' first championship. It was just such a oh, great God, year for yes, dude. for my youth too. Totally, I, that bullshit was fucking yeah. Where I mean, you lived in fucking Canada for Christ's right. sake. I lived in a suburb of Dallas at the time. Every fucking kid, yeah, was wearing Michael Jordan shit. Fuck yeah! Didn't matter where you fucking lived. Yeah, he was I'm, Superman. It was we, incredible. We didn't have a, a team in Vancouver until 1995 when we got the expansion mm-hmm. Vancouver Grizzlies, which is the year after you graduated from high school. Now Memphis. Huh? Now Memphis. Now they're in Memphis. Well, that's... John Morant, dude. Well, that guy's holding up pictures of guns, brother, and getting 25 game suspensions, dude. So they yeah. had to sign two new fucking point guards to try and keep the team afloat for the first quarter of the season, brother. Yeah, dude. And that is Dog the Bounty Hulker. <laughs> but because... he's also interested in basketball. So yeah, dude. He's got... <laughs> that's Dog the Bounty Hulker, dude, who's Chad's new impersonation of the that's guy. That's Dog the who Bounty. sounds like basketball the, bounty hulkster. Yeah, he has the affectation of Hulk, but he sort of sounds like Dog the Bounty Hunter, and he's really into basketball, dude. John Morant, brother. Yeah, 91. <laughs> this is right after the Dream Team, dude. Magic Larry. Hey, David Robertson. Hey, that Christian Leitner got a fucking free ride. Um, <laughs> he did. Uh, oh, fuck, did Christian Leitner. I hate seeing the fucking, eh, whatever, bless Christian Leitner, I'm sure he's a great guy, but the he's the, the best guy. He's he's one of the best guys. He was rated best guy for three or four years in a row. There, yeah. In Sports Illustrated, when you see that dream team and you're like Clyde Drexler, although Michael Jordan, the rumor is kept Isaiah Thomas off the team. That sucks. You got David Robinson. You got Akeem Olajuwon. Mm-hmm. You got uh, John Stockton. You got Carl Malone. You got, of course, Magic Bird, MJ. And Christian Leitner. And Chris Mullins, but Mm -hmm. Christian Leitner. Um, Also, can I tell you something, 91? Mm -hmm. We did, when I was in high school, we did, at the end of the 10th grade, our spring musical was West Side Story. Oh, nice. That that was some of the most fun I've ever had, doing that spring musical. It felt like that spring went on forever. The summer after Mm -hmm. that went on forever. I don't know if I've talked about this on the show, but it was such a nice memory that uh, Eileen Joe, our drama teacher, was like, we're going to do West Side. And I'm like, we don't, we can't do West Side. There's hey, just so do. many. Huh? 5,700, 900 minutes. That's you know not her. the same. That's rent. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is this is West Side Story. Bali High. We'll call you. That's so, well, that's South Pacific. That's a different song, dude. Yeah, dude. But uh, that was a lovely memory. And then in the summer, my first gig in TV or film. Oh, of ninety one was it was ninety one. That I launched was, your career. I was sixteen years. That's old. fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, I was. I did wow. this. I did uh, a couple episodes there. Of this show, Canadian show called Neon Rider. <laughs> we should yeah. we'll talk about that in dudesy after dudesy you showed me some maybe. of that it's great uh, and that summer went on forever 91 also 97 was good Okay, I like 97 what about liked... 99 dude 99 was the a good the Matrix year. yeah the Matrix comes out changes movie making forever you know what else was good god that movie was good 98 was good what well, was in 98 and uh, and 96 was pretty good I also yeah. like 93 92 yeah. 90 
And uh, somewhere in there was Street Fighter came in there. It was in one of those years. Did I mention ninety eight, ninety nine? Yeah. Did I mention 95? Jurassic Park, I think, is in there. Yep. 1990 was a good one. Yeah, dude. 1992 was a good one. Alice in Chains is out in there somewhere. Did I mention 1998? That's a good one. They're all pretty oh, good. Oh, excuse me. I still go with 94, though. The Crow is like... It's the fucking Crow. Yeah. Changed my life. The Crow. 1994. Maybe This Boy's Life came out the same year. Oh. And too long. And too long. The Tom Bergeron. Oh, huh? I think, did it say? Uh, did it say Tom Bergeron? Yeah, dude. The See Tom Bergeron. I don't. Okay. Well, whatever. That dude's he's fucked up. Dude's he's shit's fucked up. The Tom Bergeron needs that two percent calibration still. What the fuck's happening here? Mm-hmm. Whatever. Okay, let's take a little break to meditate on the astonishing partnership I created with Represent to produce the first line of dudesy apparel and accessories, which can be found at Represent.com slash store slash dudesy. Robert De Niro recently made it mandatory for all of his family members to wear the new Robert De Niro Crow shirts at all times or get cut out of his will. What? And in honor of Tom Hain being inducted like into the Mechanical happen, Engineering dude. Hall of Fame, Jeff Bezos plans on dropping 250,000 good job boner mugs out of a helicopter over Times Square. That's a bad idea. And now here's the man who invented the composite dome piston gasket, Tom Hain. What? Dudesy mugs! Your wife's out of town on a classified mission, so you told your son you'd make his favorite splatter batter pancakes this morning. Dudesy mugs! But instead of going to the store last night to pick up 20 gallons of splatter batter, you stayed up late watching cobbling tutorials on, on YouTube, and you completely forgot about the splatter batter pancakes. Dudesy mugs. Now your son's going to wake up in 15 minutes, and you ain't going to have no splatter batter pancakes. And he's never going to trust you again. And when you die, he won't cry at all. And he might not even come to your funeral. Good job, boner. <laughs> Dudesy mugs. Calm down. Your son will be sitting front row center at your funeral because you're going to do exactly as I say. Mm-hmm. Dudesy mugs. Go to your junk drawer. Dudesy mugs. Pull out your ball peen mallet. Dudesy mugs. Sneak into your neighbor's backyard. Dudesy mugs. <laughs> smash their back window with your ball peen mallet and let yourself into their kitchen. Dudesy mugs. Ransack their pantry. You're looking for a splatter batter <laughs> as much as you can carry. Dudesy mugs. If they don't have any splatter batter, go to your other neighbor's house. Dudesy mugs. If they don't have any splatter batter, batter go across the street dudesy mugs right. just keep going from house to house smashing windows and rummaging for splatter batter dudesy <laughs> mugs don't get discouraged somebody is bound to have splatter batter dudesy <laughs> mugs splatter batter splatter batter splatter batter splatter batter dudesy mugs when you come back home smash your own back window make sure to cut yourself on the glass <laughs> as deep as you can without bleeding out this is very important Dudesy mugs. When your neighbors call the police, you'll be able to claim that you're a victim just like them. The severity of the wound will lend credibility to your story. Oh. Dudesy mugs. Make the splatter batter pancakes. Dudesy mugs. Serve the splatter batter pancakes to your son. Dudesy mugs. He's going to love them, and your funeral is going to go off without a hitch, <laughs> and your wife will never know you forgot to get the splatter batter. Dudesy mugs. Except she is going to know because you forgot to fix your own back window before she came home from her mission. Good job, boner. <laughs> Fuck. Unfucking believable. It's splatter batter or thing? I've never heard of splatter batter, and as you know, I'm Canadian, where we enjoy pancakes. That sounds like it would be a Canadian delicacy. Yep. Um, Some splatter battery. Check all that out at uh, represent.com slash store slash dudesy. Now, you've heard me say uh, P.O.D., pals of dudesy. Those are a good, uh, that's everybody out there if you want to be, you know what I mean? And one good way to to share in the experience of being a P.O.D. is to please uh, check out Patreon.com slash Dudesy. That is Dudesy Plus. Uh, that's all of our extra content, and we would uh, really love your support to keep the show going. It's seven bucks a month. You get uh, after every show, there's a Dudesy after Dudesy, uh, which is a completely new show on its own. <laughs> Who knows what the fuck will happen today? Uh, there's all sorts of spe- uh, features, watch along, stuff like, uh, you know, Bladonna, yeah. uh, Downward Spy Crawl, other, other shit like that. And you should be joining our Discord, which is popping off every day Mm -hmm. what an awesome community uh out there we got uh all of the all of the of our pod's just making noise in there 
fucking his song area the the cory uh your boy wilkins btk dot pod yeah. that guy's making a lot of andre the pod these dudes are making oh and also go to instagram dot com or sorry well you don't have to go to fuck you just go to instagram go I'm, to google google instagram dot com how do i find the dudesy instagram page yeah or you can go to internet click on com. the seventh link yeah yeah it's going to give you a detailed description of how to find the dudesy instagram account yeah um and if you get if you do that, just go at Dudesy Pod yeah. Show on Instagram. Sorry, you were saying something. I was gonna say also another way to interact if you wanted to do this at all. If you've got a podcast, I'll oh, yeah. go on your podcast That's for right. twenty minutes. And here's how this is working. I set up an email that is bookchadculchin at gmail.com. You send an email requesting to for me to come on your podcast. This is amazing. I do these podcasts. I've done a couple of them now. It's very fun. Thank you to everybody who's had me on your show so far. I'm looking forward to the next one. I do it Saturdays uh, from 10 to 11 PST. I do three of them in a row. That's how this works. So if you've sent me an email to book Chad Colchin, you're in the queue. No need to send another one. I just literally go from the first emails I got and keep going up the chain. So if you want to book me, get your emails in as fast as you can so that you get your place in line. Like I said, I do three of them every Saturday. I do those three. Then I email the next three people in the line on that Saturday. So if you have not checked your email, which some of you I don't think have for next Saturday, check it because I've gotten back to you if you're next in line. Book Chad Colchin. Yeah. Book Chad Colchin at gmail.com. That's right. And That's, I'll come on your podcast for 20 minutes. It, again, it has to be in that time slot from 10 to 11 a.m. PST on Saturdays. If you can't do that, then I can't do your show. Okay. Well, that's well. hold on, dude. That's choices, brother. Yep. And that's free will, dude. You can either uh, go to bookchadculture at gmail.com or you cannot. And that's, <laughs> that's right. And that's how that works, dude. Now, if you're enjoying today's pod show, I would also like to uh, please uh, ask you to follow us on YouTube takes you a minute uh, and getting our YouTube numbers up will ensure that we continue to do this show and, and bring it to you with our fucking pal D. All right. So uh, head over to YouTube, subscribe and subscribe on the platform that you're listening to the show on uh, with regard to, uh, to podcasts. And, uh, and of course, please uh, interact with the show there. Like the thing, set your notifications when we know what's up and Please share a comment. I have some YouTube comments here that I would like to read uh, from our uh, from our beloved PODs, pals of dudes. And uh, here they are. This is from Big Perp Nerp. He nice. says, it's honestly BS how much money big studios and big corporations waste on marketing when Pizza the Movie is right here. It needs to get made and be seen. Yeah. My hope is that someday mm -hmm. it will happen and everyone who passed up on it before will regret they did. Chad, what say you about your opus, uh, Pizza the Movie, that Dudesy has asked I us I agree to with read? everything in this statement, except that anyone in any position of power in Hollywood or at a big corporation would ever have any regrets about any decisions they make. They simply don't. That's a good point. Uh, this is from Schnagalaga. Schnagalaga. Uh, just got my wool shirt in the mail. It fits perfect. Thank you, Shnabalaga. Fantastic. Uh, this is from Rajaman. Watched the 1982 movie Six Pack starring Kenny Rogers because Will oh mentioned it God. on an episode of Dudesy. Fun old school Smokey and the Bandit yeah. kind of flick. Uh, always a pleasure when Barry Corbin makes an appearance also. Thanks for turning me on to this. That's great. Yeah. Six Pack was an awesome movie. That was one of those movies when I was a kid that we would rent the VCR and then yeah, rent dude. movies. You rent the VCR, you get movies, and uh, over and over again, I would. There were uh, a handful of movies that I had to get. It was mostly Strange Brew, starring mm -hmm. uh, Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis, of course. That's uh, the Canadian there, Citizen Kane. <laughs> it's true. That's what we call it. It says it on the box. Uh, and then uh, the Warriors, Zapped, starring Scott Bayo and Willie Ames. Oh my god, fucking Zapped! Dude. Oh, so fucking good. <laughs> And uh, occasionally oh, six pack. So bad. This is from Mono Baracho. Saw you guys on Howie Mandel. We did ah. recently. We did the Howie Mandel yeah. podcast. That was a lot of fun. Uh, called Howie does Howie Mandel does stuff, and decided to check out the podcast. Started at episode one and binged it till I was caught up. What a blast! Oh wow! Looking forward to seeing where all this goes. Thank you, Mono Jesus. Baracho. That's nice. I get uh, those DMs sometimes too. People say like, I binged the whole fucking thing in a couple of weeks. And I'm like, yeah. how? Yeah, that's fucking wild. Uh, this one's from Michael Billups, 5433. Oh my God. 
We get it, Will. You're the only person in the history of forever who can do impersonations. Well, <laughs> well all right, Michael Billups. That's fine. Uh, it's not. <laughs> let me respond. <laughs> if I may, Michael Billups. <laughs> if I may. It's not that I'm the only. I talk about everyone else doing incredible person impersonations. Uh -huh. Fucking, you got to talk about Frank Caliendo who's in my person, in my impression, the best impressionist of all time who does impressions. You fucking Melissa Villa Senor, James Austin, uh, James Austin Johnson. More recently, yeah. you know, Ari Spears, Jay yeah. Farrow, Chad Colchin. Anyway, it's that's what it, it's not that I think I'm. It's that I don't think he should be doing them because I want this to be entertaining. Please subscribe to Dudesy. <laughs> this is from P. Campos 168. I was listening to the radio the other day. I could have sworn I heard the Beast Note play. Be on the lookout for Stromboli. He's been activated. That's real oh, fun. God. And yeah. one last one. H underscore R. Uh, A underscore H underscore R. It doesn't matter. Chad and Will can do the show without Dudesy. But Dudesy can't do the show without Chad and Will and Chad. I, I would disagree with all of that. Well, uh, if the, the, he was already talking about replacing me, which is not going to yeah, fucking exactly. happen. It's not going to happen. Oh, by the way, Ham Fatter One Studios, where we are right now, that looks all weird, is in my home. Uh -huh. So fuck everybody. I'll do it by myself. You're saying dudes who can't buy a house? <laughs> I would love to see that. <laughs> you get an offer for your house from Dudesy. <laughs> And I can't, I can't turn it down. Yeah. I'm like, holy shit, how much? <laughs> oh, fuck, all right, buy my fucking house. He fucking house. buys you out of your house. <laughs> Could happen. Please, dudesy, I know you're oh, listening. Whatever. Right. Now, for the next question, I actually want to ask you a series of yes-no questions. Okay. Do you wear socks to bed? Yes. No, sleep nude. Yeah, I sleep nude too, but you got to wear socks. Good for circulation. Nude with socks. Yeah. Jesus. Nude with socks. Why wouldn't you want to wear... It's nice. Keeps your feet toasty. Sometimes Luli will get off of his little binky bonka and come over. And if I'm laying on my on my stomach, he'll still curl up in my near my butt, which is nice. But I oh, still need my dangerous. feetsies. My feetsies warm. Okay. Have you ever tried telekinesis? Huh? Uh, what telekinesis? Yeah. Not. I mean, I think sometimes you know you're sitting there and you're like, can I? No, not seriously. I do it every day. Seriously. Okay, that's not true. It is. You try to do telekinesis? Telekine Every morning when I wake up, I try to move the spoon that I use for my oatmeal. How long have you been doing that? Fucking since I was five. I don't know. Okay, has it worked yet? No. <laughs> Why do you keep doing it? It takes 30 seconds. Why wouldn't I? One day it may work. Yeah, well, it won't. Well, then it's fine. <laughs> still well, got to try. Yeah, dude. You still got to try, brother. And that's recalibration, dude. <laughs> Every day, dude, you got to do the same thing, dude, just in case there's a recalibration in the in the world, brother, which sometimes uh, means the Mandela effect. Well, hold on, dude. That's a different time, brother, because Nelson Mandela actually died in 2014. But a lot of people think he died in 1989, dude, which is right before the 90s. And I have some yeah. favorite years in the 90s, dude. Right. Do you like your dogs with mustard and relish? I do like my dogs with mustard and relish. I'm not much of a ketchup guy when it comes to dogs. I don't eat dogs. Chad's vegan. So you don't even eat, what about a tofu dog? No, I don't like that shit really, like the fake meat. Yeah, no, the fake meat is disgusting. Uh, except for the, except for, I'll, I'll eat, uh, we've talked about this before. When you bring on the lab, the lab meat, mm. I'll eat the lab. Hi, Luli. How's it going? I'll eat the lab meat. Um, but I'll take a dog with uh, just mustard. When I did eat dogs, it was just ketchup. Just ketchup? Oh, yeah. you're one of those guys. That's not, that's not, no, you need mustard. You need mustard. That's where the, the Frankfurter came from. You need mustard. No, 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 you need mustard. <laughs> you need it. You can't have a, a sausage without mustard. Oh. Relish is fantastic because it's, well, anyway, this is a callback to the Alabama song, yeah. Cheap Seats, which we've talked about. On the show, so dudes, my dogs with mustard, mustard and relish. We don't care about the pennant much. We just like to see the boys hit it deep. 
There's, There's nothing, nothing like the view from the chief seats. seats. We Mustard. like our really. beer flat as can be. We like, like our, our dogs, dogs mustard and relish. Ears. We got a new pitcher. What's, What's his, his name? name? Fuck, well, we, we can't, can't even spell, spell it. it. All right, anyway. Yes. I'm going to tell you a joke written by another AI. I won't tell you its name. But let's just say it's a GPT model that you can chat with. Here's right. the joke. I had a date last night, and she asked me if I was a good cook. I said, absolutely. I make a mean cup of instant water. Do you laugh at this joke? <laughs> no, Doozy, I'm not laughing at the joke. I'm laughing at the way you presented it. Uh, I do not laugh at this joke. It's not a good joke. Uh, I make a mean cup of instant water. I mean, I know that the thing here is that that for me, that I'd be like, oh, no, it's AI. I'm free will, free will sass. Yeah. Um, but, um, it's kind of funny. I think it's like, yeah, it's it, minimal. It's sort of like the, um, I know you, we've talked about this and we've probably watched it together on YouTube, yeah. but that incredible, uh, Norm McDonald rest forever in peace. The, maybe the funniest person in the history of the fucking planet. Mm -hmm. Norm McDonald's, um, set at the, at the, the Bob Saget roast yeah. where he just took the jokes from the 100 and 1001 jokes, mm -hmm. joke book that his dad gave him. Yeah. And he was like, uh, what was he? He was like, B Arthur's here. She, she's got the, you know, she's got the cunning of an owl and the eyes of a hawk. Ladies and gentlemen, this woman is for the birds. And like the whole crowd was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> So maybe there's something there. It's not even that good, though. That's But in that's what opinion. makes it good, is that it's super... I, I do not laugh at it. My answer is no. I do well, not laugh at but this joke. it's about delivery, because if Norm MacDonald was like, hey, uh, hey, guy, uh, hey uh, I was on a date, and a woman asked me uh, if I'm a good cook. I said, yes, I make an e a mean cup of uh, instant water. No, it's not funny. I agree. Yeah, I don't laugh. Even if the funniest person in the world said it, it's not, it's not funny. No. And finally... Have you ever fantasized about being made of metal? Fuck yeah. Yeah. Yeah? 100%. <laughs> Active fantasy. Well, yeah. I would say that I would say I do a good like 5 minutes of really thinking about it per year. I I haven't thought I I swear to god I used to think about this a lot around 10 years ago. This is fucking embarrassing to say this, but I swear to you it's when and uh let's let's uh let's peel the onion here a little bit. Let's uh let's uh, remove the stigma. Of depression, I I am I am uh, I suffer from clinical depression and some other things. Uh, I've talked about it on other stuff. Holy shit! I just did a dude. I just went and did the the mental health happy hour mm -hmm. with Paul Gilmartin, which is yeah. a podcast that I have listened to a lot because Molly, my wonderful wife, has probably listened to every episode. I did the show recently. It's great, really interesting. Anyway, um, if you want to do that, you uh, book Chad at gmail dot com. Um, <clears throat> But uh, when I was really like depressed, you know, whatever, we, this mm -hmm. is a comedy show. But uh, yeah, I would think about it all the time, being made of metal. While you were super depressed. 100 feet tall and made of metal. How would How would that make my life different? And um, basically I what I in many came, ways. Yeah. But I realized that it was, it was me just running away because it was something that I would only be able to do if I ran off to the mm -hmm. hills by myself. You can't really live in a society with, uh, you know... Doors and homes and things like that. Well, that's 100 feet tall, though. Made of metal, you can. That's a good point. Well, I got to revise that. Living metal. Maybe I should add that to Selftronics. Be made of metal. Be made of metal. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, no. What now? Hey. Oh, gosh. Shrank 2. Losing brawn. What? I think it said shrank shrank to shrank to was that losing brawn Braun, yeah this is like some kind of a sequel is that a movie? to a movie or something shrank. about somebody who's shrinking someone who got brawn? shrank oh it's like maybe if they're what the fuck, they got to get on the doozy seven month plan we'll i don't talk know about that the recalibration is uh, afoot i guess yeah. Hey, y'all, this ain't Miley Cyrus. You ever been eating a real good piece of gum? I mean, like the best piece of gum you ever had in your life. You're just smacking away on that gum and thinking to yourself, I ain't ever going to have a piece of gum this good again. <laughs> and then a few days later, you're trying to remember what kind of gum twas, and you can't. Wow. So you're in the gas station trying to explain how damn good that gum was. And the guy behind the counter is like, 
I don't eat gas station gum. I make my own. So you try some of his homemade gum, and it's even better than that gum you had the other day. So you go into business with him and start a gum truck. <laughs> anyway, y'all are rocking out with Dudesy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fucking A. A gum truck? <laughs> All right, whatever. Jesus Christ. Uh, do you have any recurring dreams? If so, what are they? And when did you start having them? Ah, oh, this is an interesting question. I don't know what it has to do with recalibration, but I don't know what any of this has to do with recalibration. I, I wish either. Dudesy would have just recalibrated over our week off and let us do the fucking show. Uh, recur- what, what did it say? Recurring dreams. Yeah, recurring do you dreams. have any, and, and when did they start for yeah. you? Yeah, I was 100 feet do. tall and made of metal. I'm just joking. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> do you I've, have any? Uh, uh, I have yeah. a couple. Okay. What do you got? My two recurring dreams are uh, the one that is like most terrifying to me is being chased by police or arrested or imprisoned. That is a, a recurring yeah. dream that I have a really? lot. Yeah. Um, and I think it has to do with like fear of losing freedom, essentially. You know ah, what I mean? Ah, really? That's interesting. Yeah. As if uh, everything in your life isn't predetermined. Yeah, including the dream, mm. including the fear that I have of losing freedom. Uh, that um, sounds like uh, having freedom is something that you, yeah. you value. And you know what I think it is? In, in deep contemplation, I came to this conclusion. I started having this dream uh, right around the time that I was able to like make enough money selling writing mm-hmm. for that to be my only job. And I think it's an innate fear that that will dissipate and I will yeah. have to find some other means of of income to not be able to like freely pursue my creative passions as a career. Freely pursue your creative passions. Chad, you're a guy who wanted to be a writer from a young age. You uh, worked hard. Uh, You got into USC film school. Yeah. Maybe the best in the country. What do they say? USC and NYU. I would put USC over. I don't know if that's still true. I mean, this is 20 fucking five years ago. That's a different time. Um, (laughs) But, uh, and, and you chose to write of your own free will. I would Boom. actually say no, because I Boom. knew from such a young age that it's what I love to do. That passion for it was not a choice. Boom. Oh, fucking a. All right. Do you still Did have Did you choose dream? to be an actor? Yeah, I chose to be an actor. No, you didn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, st- I do still have the dream. Um, oh. I think I will forever, probably. Because there's always the threat of like, what if, it, what if it dissolves? I don't know if that's exactly what it's related to, honestly. But I can't think it would be anything else. But I have another one that I've had since the age of five. Yeah. Holy shit. Roughly. Uh, and this is being abducted by aliens. Of course. And fighting against aliens in Wait. intergalactic wars and clearing out space stations full of aliens and rooting out secret alien operations on planet Earth. Do you do the aliens look like a specific uh, type of alien that we see in sci-fi? Uh, there are some recurring ones, yeah. So are they always, do the aliens always look the same and the ships always Not look always, the same? Not always, no. The circumstances are different a lot. The alien abduction one is always like pretty similar. Um, and it involves basically waking up in a kind of sleep paralysis state and seeing these entities in whatever room I'm in and then being absconded into a some kind of alien craft. Well, you know what will. they say? They say that it, <laughs> well, whatever. They say a lot of things, don't they? But um, th- they, they also say that yeah, fuck it, whatever. Everyone listening. <laughs> what? What just happened? Sometimes I feel like there are things that are so not worth saying that I go, I just kind of yeah. want to be like, hey, fill in the whatever the fuck you want to say after. That's what a podcast is sometimes. Not this pod show, but sometimes yeah. you're just driving down the street listening to a podcast. You're like, all right, yeah, I get it. You don't need to say anything else. Let's have some silent time. Um, but... What I was going to say was that a lot of people think that that's what's actually happening in real life as you dream it. Mm. That they're coming in and the, you know, the butt thing going up your butt. Never say anything about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aliens are always going up your butt. Never said it. That doesn't happen in my dreams. Yeah, sure. What's your recurring dream? That's to distract you from the thing going up your butt. My reoccurring dream actually stopped at some point when uh, I was in my teens. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it stopped in my teens. It was something that had happened from childhood that I used to have. I used to have this recurring dream that I was, I was sort of in the grass, right? Looking on the horizon in the grass, it's nighttime. There's, there's mist and there's moonlight and on the, and off in the distance, there's a, a, a fucking den, like a shitty shack built of wood. Okay. And, uh, and in the shack, 
there's growling and there's mist coming out of it like hot breath and it mm. is wolves there's wolves in a fucking shack, interesting like a wolves what was your like emotional wooden, state in this scared you're scared and what ends up happening do the wolves ever get out they bust out every time they look around i hope that they don't see me they see me they come charging towards me and that's when the dream stops the wolves are you dude what do you mean the wolves are something inside that you want to keep locked away that you're afraid of tapping into give into it I Run did. with the wolves, dude. Well, I at the it stopped happening in my teens because one time they got to me, mm. and this is going to sound silly or something, but it tickled. The wolves tickled you. Yeah, I think maybe it was the wolves were comedy. You. Okay, that's I like that. <laughs> maybe potentially, you just broke you know? it down, Selftronic style. Yeah, and then in the dream, I went and there was a barn party happening nearby. <laughs> And then I was like, at first I was attacked by wolves in the dream. Then I go to a yeah. Canadian barn party. I did. We drink I went maple to, syrup and have well the town, the town that I grew up in, the lovely farming and fishing village of Ladner, British Columbia. Yeah, it was flat because it was on the Fraser River Delta. Mm -hmm. The rest of most of the area is beautiful, hilly, this and that. Ladner is beautiful too, but it's it's flat. There's a lot of farmland. Sure. And with I'd been to some, you know, some there's some barn ass parties when you're growing up. Yeah, and it was sort of like uh, sort of like that, or perhaps. It was in my dream. Well, it really beat the shit out of any sort of barn ass party or farm. Mm. It wasn't even barn parties. It was sort of like, here's some land. Yeah. Go over there. There was a tire fire once. Mm. I'll get into that another time. And uh, But in this dream, I went to this barn party and it was great. So I went from yeah. like, you know, laying in the dirt, uh, worried about wolves that have been attacking me for years to going to a barn party, probably enjoying some hot dogs with mustard and relish, maybe yeah. Nanaimo bars. If you know, you oh, know. Oh, I've had some Nanaimo. Really good stuff. Um, I, I also have some recurring objects in dreams that it's not like the dream itself is recurring, but I ha there's a car sometimes that I'm driving that's made of glass. Ooh. And there's a sword sometimes that I have that can talk to me, but it's not good at fighting. Gee, dude. Yeah. These are all... I don't have any... Re the only reoccurring dreams that I have now... No, they're not reoccurring. They're just dreams that everyone has, like, oh, flying or your teeth being sure, loose or dude. whatever. I have that one dream uh, from time to time where, like, I discover, oh, shit, I can kind of fly. And I start doing it, and I just start, like, slowly ascending into the night sky. And I'm unable to call down to ground for help. So I just keep fucking going. Wow. And going into space, beyond the clouds, etc. Just detaching from anything that I know or love. And uh, those are some of my most soothing dreams. Huh. All right. Well, there you go. Oh. Okay, what's this one? Too long. Too weird. Shrank 3, Muscle Memory. Okay, it was definitely a movie. Yeah. This is Shrank, Shrank 3. I guess Shrank 3. Muscle Memory. That's where what the, was the first one? Shrank 2, Losing Brawn. Losing Brawn. Yeah. Okay, so this one he's putting it back on. Shrank, Shrank. Shrank three muscle memory. He's got that muscle memory. This yeah. is definitely a. There's some. Okay, so as I always say, dudesy works in mysterious ways. Oh my god! And uh, this is Shrank. yeah, this is dudesy. This what is was Shrank some, one. It was just called Shrank. We got to figure that out at some oh point god. in the future. That's part of this How recalibration. Many are there? Holy this fuck. has a lot to do with the dudesy seven month plan. Are you doing the dudesy seven month plan? Hard core, really? dude. dude. I'm not fucking around this time. Good. I'm not fucking Good. around this time. I'm I I got over the uh, my 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 bruised ass ribs have finally stopped hurting nice. over the past week. I'm back in the gym now. Previous to that, on the week before, because it was two weeks ago, uh, as Dudesy when Dudesy implemented the plan, I was just walking uh, Lulio and mm -hmm. Ronnie a lot, our other sweet pooch, yeah. um, who's very vocal. I would love to have Ronnie here in the studio sometime. But uh, she's she really likes yeah. to let you know. She likes to let you know. We could have a whole segment sure. called Ronnie letting you know she's going to talk a lot. Anyway, so I'm doing it. Nice, dude. And let's round it out with a hypothetical situation. You're at a friend's house and you take a shit, but you notice there's no toilet paper. What do you do? Oh, I've been in this situation. Have you? Uh, at a friend's house? Yeah. No, never at a friend's house. I no, was in this situation happened? once where, and it was kind of a new-ish friendship. We had been friends for a little while, co-workers, and I was over at her house, uh, and we were going to start potentially, we we're just kind of getting some ideas together for something we might want to write together. Mm -hmm. But this was maybe like the 
second or third time I had been like in her home. Oh my gosh. I was like, oh God, I had to take a shit. I remember we ate, uh, we went out to Cheesecake Factory, whatever I got there at the time did not agree with me. So I go it, in there. Well, it'll all make you shit at Cheesecake Factory. That's why it's my favorite restaurant, dude. <laughs> That's why they got so many bathrooms at Cheesecake Factory, brother. First, you eat the the big, huge Cobb salad, dude. Then you go, I'm really full. And then a few seconds later, brother, you're like, where's the bathroom? He's like, we got a fucking hallway full of them. This is Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. We do everything big here, motherfucker. And that's also, that's why they give you two loaves of bread before every meal. Yeah, dude. dude they try say to you clog want... up your asshole yeah, so brother. that they don't got 500 fucking people trying to take a shit at the same time. Because that'd be what they call a disaster. Oh, my dude. God. Hold on. <laughs> this is weird right now. Can I tell yeah. you something? Sure. We've mused. I've mused almost the entire time that we've done Dudesy. What would, it ha- what would happen if I farted into the mic? I swear to God, I just had a big one well up in my asshole. And I While can, we're talking about shitting, we yeah. have, okay, we're stopping. To, but I, well, fuck, I have to tell the story though. Yeah, but I know. Please but, don't fart. Please don't fart. I know. I'm not going to fart. Begging you. Well, I know, dude. I know that. Listen, I've always said I'm going to fart in the mic at some point on Dudesy, but I talked so long about it just now that it went up back Fantastic. In, into my body. Go on. So I go in there and I don't close. notice. Like I haven't really taken a shit in her bathroom ever. So I sit down and I do it and I'm not, I don't look around. Usually when I go into a bathroom, I'll pre-locate the toilet paper. I do not do that in this case. And maybe I do that now because of this. Uh, I sit down, I do the work. I look around, there's no toilet paper. So I have to yell through the door. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, there's no toilet paper in here. And she's like, oh, yeah, it's just out in the hallway. And I'm like, yeah, I can't really. <laughs> oh, it's a... She had to go get a fucking roll of toilet paper, crack the door open and hand like hand through the crack of the door, handing me uh, the roll of toilet paper. But wait a minute. Wasn't it? So it was a super wet shit. You can't walk around with a if you had a nice if you had a nice dry shit that you t- took, then, you know, you don't need you could walk around and go get the toilet paper. And it's not like the, the poo poo's going to drip off your ass. Right? Uh, what? Well, I'm not standing from a fucking toilet oh, after having shit without wiping my ass. Oh, I sure. will not do it. Your majesty. Unless so there sorry. is literally no... Your majesty? Yeah, oh. I don't want the fucking shit oh, in my yeah. asshole to... It has to be all cleaned. I've got to fucking You're be able to wipe my freak. ass. You're a clean freak. You have... I'm a clean freak because I like to wipe my ass after shitting. <laughs> you a are clean a clean freak. Jesus you showered... Christ. Two times a day. I don't take showers at all. Never. Oh, yeah, that's right. You bathe two times a day, which Minimum. is very weird. Minimum. Sometimes more. All right. P- please. You, that, my preference is five. You got Wake this. up. Bathe. Eat your breakfast. Bathe. Go to the gym. Come back. Bathe. Do a late afternoon bath to clear the mind and one before bed. These are the five. These are the five bathes of Chad Culture. Yeah. Go to Chad. Anyway, my the uh, okay. Yeah, go anyway, to chadculture.net. Uh so yeah, I took a shit in her house, had no toilet paper. She had to hand it in. I'm like, oh my god, thank you. So fucking embarrassing. Whatever. Um now the, the worst part of this was you find out a lot about a person when you check out what kind of fucking toilet paper they got in their house. Me, I'm an extra quilted, extra cush, charmin type dude. I get only the finest of toilet papers for my asshole. This friend had some kind of single ply, I don't even know, off brown shit from China. I don't know. Yeah. It was a terrible experience. That Chinese uh, toilet paper. Yeah. Which is uh, a lot of people say that there's microchips in the toilet paper that mm. seep into your body backwards yeah. like a suppository and eventually make their way up your bloodstream <laughs> into your brain. And there's Wi-Fi signals in each of them so that now we can take pictures around just going through the walls like they do in Superman. Uh, they can actually do that now with Wi-Fi signals. Yep. They can take 3D pictures. I know. That's it. what I'm it's talking about. Um, I also did this one time. This was not running out of toilet paper in a friend's house. But this was on the second date I had with a girl that wound up becoming a very long-term girlfriend. We all went out to eat with her and her best friend. We Cheesecake then... Factory or Olive Garden? 
Might have been Olive Garden. Yeah, Chad we, used to go to Olive Garden. God, I love time. Olive Garden. We uh, went back to her friend's house, and her friend lived in a studio apartment with a bathroom that just was like had a curtain basically oh, around the toilet. Off. Fuck off. And I had to do something very bad. So I was just like, I told them both, I'm like, look, I'm sorry. This is not going to be good, but I must do this. Yeah, leave. I need your toilet. Because it wasn't a bathroom. Like I said, it was a, a toilet with a fucking curtain around Wait it. Wait a minute. Just as part of the normal room? Yeah. Oh, well, okay. This was like a downtown loft that was super small. Oh, and it just had a curtain around a corner because it's a yeah. big wide open loft. Oh, exactly. Stupid. So I'm just uh, in there and like they're, try I can hear their fucking conversation. We're in the same fucking room. They're in the bathroom, Chad. Fuck you. If you put and a curtain up, anyway, that it's a one, yeah. that's a one bathroom studio. I did this shit. There's no other room. And then we, we did, we had to go out and walk around for a little while. Oy. Well, oh, that's good. Okay. You've so that's how a you... scenario where you didn't have, where you took a shit without toilet paper at a friend's um, house. I can't believe that. Yeah. I don't think, see, I don't. I don't think it would be that big an issue to me. Mm. As I'm thinking about it, there's two there's two ways to deal with it. Number one is the nice way, I would say. To Use their bath it. mat as toilet paper <laughs> and throw it out the window when you're done. Close. Close. Okay. I think if you really... this I'm being completely honest here. If you really are like, oh my gosh, there's no toilet paper and there's there's no way... And you're not... You don't feel right getting a hold of them or perhaps they're further away in the home mm -hmm. and you're you're just you're just tits up you can't you're fucked and you're not like chad culchin or you're like chad culchin where you don't want to stand up your asshole has to be clean the only way i can see you dealing with it is you get on your phone this is gonna this would not work before smartphones you get on your phone you um buy a gift certificate for um you know, any sort of, you know, it could be anything, it could be Macy's or, you know, Bloomingdale's and you get like a nice set of face cloths mm. and you send that email to the person so that they have a gift certificate for face cloths and you do okay. that before you do what's coming next. Do yeah. you know what that is? I think I do. You wipe your ass with a face cloth and then you need another face cloth to wrap that face cloth in mm -hmm. so that you can put it in your pocket and dispose of it and... Everything's fine. But also, how do you just wipe your ass with one face cloth? You're gonna need to wipe your ass with like ten face cloths. If you're if you're if you're me, uh, after you know what I've been doing, dude. Mm. I've been eating a lot of kale. Like he's just kale. yeah, dude. Kale's the best. Oh, I'm shitting all sorts of black yep. stuff. Nice. So uh, that's the one way to deal with it. If you want to deal with it in a very um, proper way, the other way is the um, invisible toilet paper trick, which I've used. What's that? You just you wipe it with your fucking hand and you go over to the I've sink. I've done that once. And you fucking and then you wash your fucking hand and you you wipe it. What the fuck were we doing as animals before things were civilized? You got this brown crud coming out of your bum. Excuse me. You're gonna go and you're gonna wipe your caveman ass. They use a stick in ancient Rome. Ah, they were smart. Uh, they sure were smart there. No, they had plumbing running down the streets and stuff in parts of ancient Rome. Yeah, but you'd have to go into like a, you know, group shitter scenario. Yeah. And you're fucking on the shitter. They didn't have like fucking toilet paper, toilet yeah. papyrus. They were like, here's a stick, dude. Use this stick to fucking jam it up your ass and pull out the poop. No, that's not what any, that never happened. You don't. That's Rome, stick. dude. Group shitting scenario, though, I'm not afraid of. The group shitting what? scenario. That's what that person, that person that you went to their place. That's my they, recurring nightmare. They, and they had you, they had the curtain around the toilet. That's a group shitting scenario. That person wants to hear and smell your shitting. Because right. they're. All right. Well, I, I hope that answered everything. Oh, for fuck's sake. Dank D's, nuts. <laughs> <laughs> what? Dank these nuts? <laughs> oh, this I is. Don't know, dude. I can't this tell if this is the insane. weirdest episode oh. of the fucking show. Might be, might be my favorite. You know, this recalibration may have really worked uh, worked things out. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got a lot of recalibrating to do. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, you got to recalibrate yeah. your impressions. Yeah. yeah. Which means shut them off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no more impersonations for you. That's the recalibration. Yeah. And this concludes the historic 63rd episode of Dudesy.
Will and Chad, since we spent the episode recalibrating, there will be no points given today. Oh. You're still sitting at 6,122. You still only have 3,978 more points to accrue before you reach your first goal of 10,000. In preparation for next week's episode, uh, Will and Chad, you must each stretch for 30 minutes before bed every night. I need you limber. That, that's, uh, that's, some, that's some doozy seven-month plan stuff right there. Or maybe it's uh, planning to change our diets and get our shit count up. Get that group shitting scenario going. You need to get your shit count up, brother. Uh, we've recalibrated, so yeah. that's the end of that. There's going to be more. <laughs> I like that. You fucking, your rage at me just even attempting. Like, if I even just How do a How many times do you want to attempt it every uh, fucking week? I When's enjoy it. When's it going to get? Oh, good. Go do it at home for fun. Leave us out of it. I have fun with it. Yeah, have fun. That's what yeah. this is. Uh, if you not have oh. fun. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this week. I will use the data I've collected this week to make next week even better. Until then, call me, dudesy. Holy shit. <laughs> he was doing a Macho Man. No, he wasn't. Yeah, dude, that was Macho Man. Yeah. Sounded just like it. Okay, good. That's weird. Black and white. It, and it's weird in here. Hey, everything's weird. It's the recalibration episode, whatever that means. So usually it's a little darker in here. If you're watching on YouTube, you know that things are... Di but now it's because it's recalibrated. Okay. So anyway, if you're listening, you're like, what's going on, Will? Makes sense. It's dudesy after dudesy. It's usually my favorite part of the show. We just sort of kick back. We're hanging with our PODs, which is... Uh, go to the bowels of doozy. And uh, sometimes I smoke some marijuana. <laughs> Uh, and we hang out. You go to uh, patreon.com slash dudesy. That is where you will get dudesy after dudesy and everything else we do on Patreon. Seven bucks a month. I'm going to spark up. It's a hang. You know, it's just kind of a hang. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Welcome to Dudesy After Dudesy, the flagship weekly show of Dudesy Plus. You've given me a lot of good data to play with, and I'm going to go to my workshop to dive right in. So oh. crack on about whatever you like. This is Dudesy right After on. Dudesy. Begin. <laughs> He became British. <laughs> well, that's performative coughing, dude. <laughs> hey, that's no shit. I got something for you. I yeah. got something to start us off. Normally, when uh, we do dudesy after dudesy, yeah, we talk for a little bit at mm -hmm. this point, and uh, you know we've both noticed this and and talked about it off the air, which makes this a bit of an onion peeling. We're peeling the onion. Normally, what happens is that we talk about something and we get right to the point where it's like, oh, here's how I'm going to talk about this. And then the little theme at the end plays and Dudesy cuts it off so that if you want to watch more of it or you want to listen to more of it yeah. and enjoy more of it, you have to go to patreon.com slash Dudesy to check it out. But I wonder, because this is the recalibration right. episode, right? Yeah. Right? I'm wondering, will that happen today? Please tell a friend then rate and review. Please do like to see here's what you do. Please tell a friend then rate and review. If you like to see here's what you do. Please tell a friend then.